last facelift was a pretty dramatic one for the Porsche Cayman. It got some new numbers in its name to make it the Porsche 718 Cayman, and it swapped its lineup of naturally aspirated six cylinder engines for turbocharged flat four units. That meant that Porsche purists, who prefer the naturally aspirated sixes, were left more than a little upset at the engine swap. But how have these changes impacted a model that has long been one of our favourite sports cars? Has it really lost any of its magic? We're going to find out. And don't forget, if you want the very best deals on the Cayman or any other new car, head to the What Car New Car Buying section on our website. The Cayman is available with three different engines. They're all petrol, they're all turbocharged, and they all have four cylinders. The entry-level Cayman gets a 295 brake horsepower, two-litre engine, and that is good for a 0 to 62 mile per hour time of 4.9 seconds. If you go for the Cayman S, that gets a 2.5 litre engine, and that drops the sprint time down to 4.4 seconds. As you'd expect, both cars pull amazingly well once the turbocharger kicks in around 2,000 RPM and really starts doing its business. But you want to get it above 3,000 RPM to really wring the best of the performance out of the engine. And from there, you'll get incredibly potent acceleration all the way to above 7,000 RPM. But it's not all good news though, because the power delivery does suffer from a few flat spots and they're a bit more noticeable in the S variant. Then above those two variants, you get the car that we're driving today, which is the GTS. That gets the same 2.5 litre engine as the Cayman S, but it's tuned to produce a little bit more power. So the acceleration is still ferocious. But the outright pace isn't actually that much quicker than the Cayman S. No, the real benefit of the GTS is that the power delivery is just a bit smoother and more consistent than you get in the other engines. The six-speed manual gearbox is more entertaining for keen drivers, but its long ratios mean you'll rarely need more than second and third for spirited driving. The seven-speed PDK automatic gearbox costs extra, but it's wonderfully quick and smooth, so it might be worth considering if you spend a lot of your time slogging through traffic. You do lose some driver involvement though. But performance is one thing, what about handling? Well, the Cayman absolutely does not disappoint here. The steering is beautifully precise and accurate and offers plenty of feedback through it to give you real confidence behind the wheel. There's virtually no body roll through corners and there's an enormous amount of grip on offer as well. It's essentially on a different level to rivals like the BMW M2, Audi TT and the Jaguar F-Type. It's only really the Alpine A110 that comes close. But don't go thinking that you have to be on track or herring around corners to enjoy the Cayman, because so broad are its talents that it actually feels just as comfortable pootling around town as well. It's not all good news for the Cayman on the performance front though. Sure, the numbers are impressive, but if you've owned one of the older six-cylinder Caymans, you'll be very disappointed by the sound of these engines. It's now a monotonous drone, even with the optional sports exhaust, replacing the glorious howl that used to characterise Porsche's entry-level sports car. It's especially disappointing when you consider that rivals like the V8 F-Type and TTRS make hilariously entertaining noises. It rides remarkably well by sports car standards too. Sure, it's firm, it's a sports car, what do you expect? But the damping is good enough to mean that you never really feel uncomfortable. The driving position is absolutely bang on the money. The pedals are perfectly positioned and there's plenty of adjustment in both the steering wheel and in the seat as well. Now, it's on the centre console here and on this upright part of the dashboard where all the important buttons and switches are. Now, it might look a little confusing at first, but actually, once you've learned how to navigate your way around the controls, it's easy enough to use. Sports cars are notoriously hard to see out of, with thick pillars, small rear windows and a low driving position. But the Cayman is better than many. It's annoying that parking sensors are only available as an option though. We definitely recommend adding them. You get a relatively crisp looking 7 inch touchscreen infotainment system as standard and that comes with DAB radio, Bluetooth and sat nav. You also get Apple CarPlay, although annoyingly, for some anyway, Android Auto isn't available. The touchscreen responds quickly to your inputs and the menus are relatively logically laid out. You also get some helpful shortcut buttons 
to navigate around the different menus. We would say that Audi's MMI system is a little bit easier to use on the move though, and that's largely thanks to having a rotary dial controller. Porsche's reputation for building luxurious interiors is definitely on show here. All the buttons and switches are extremely high quality, and everything you touch is made of nice, dense, soft touch materials. It certainly feels more special to sit inside than rivals like the Jaguar F-Type, which is more expensive as well, but we'd say it's not quite as classy as the more minimalist Audi TT. It might have its engine mounted in the middle of the car, but there's still plenty of room for tall drivers. And it's wide enough so that you won't be brushing shoulders with whoever you sat next to as well. The bigger issue though is storage. The glove box is a decent size and there are several storage compartments dotted around the cabin, but none of them are particularly generous in their size. So sure, you can fit some keys in here, your phone, your wallet can go there, but it's pretty stingy. And the biggest problem are these door pockets down here, which are extremely shallow and difficult to access. And you won't even be able to fit a big bottle of water in there. As for space in the rear seats, well, they don't exist. The Cayman is exclusively a two-seater. Now, some rivals offer cubbies or luggage nets behind the front seats. The Audi TT even has small rear seats. But in the Cayman, even though you can slide the front backrest forwards easily, the space you've got behind is only really enough for a newspaper or a magazine. It does, though, have a handy jacket hanger at the top here. It's worth bearing in mind, though, if you're a tall driver and you need the seat all the way back, then there won't be any space at all. You do, though, get a little shelf at the top here which is useful for a couple of soft bags. Now, because the engine's in the middle of the car, that means that you've got a choice of two different boots. There's one in the nose, and there's one in the usual place at the back right here. Now, it's only really big enough for a few soft weekend bags, some small suitcases, or a weekly shop, but it's a decent enough space for this type of car. It's worth bearing in mind, though, that an Audi TT is a much more practical alternative, if that's your primary concern. You'll have noticed that we are talking about a Porsche. So yes, you are right to assume that it's going to require a fairly hefty initial investment to get one, even if you opt for an entry-level Cayman. It's also worth bearing in mind that real-world fuel economy is pretty disappointing. We took a Cayman S on our true MPG real-world fuel economy test, and it returned just 28.4 miles per gallon. The Cayman had a slightly more palatable result of 34.4. Servicing and replacement parts will all cost more than you might expect, and like most cars of this type, it'll happily chew through tyres and brakes. But it's not all bad news on the financial front, because the Cayman will hold on to its value well, better than an F-Type, in fact. However, the Cayman does look very expensive compared to the Audi TT and BMW M2. Plus, those cars get much more generous levels of equipment as standard. Even in range-topping GTS trim, you still have to pay more for cruise control, parking sensors, a reversing camera, power folding door mirrors, heated seats, and even climate control. Our recommended choice would be sticking with the standard Cayman and adding a few choice options. If you're tempted by a Cayman S with a few options though, you might actually be better off going for the GTS because you'll get some of those goodies thrown in and it will hold on to its value better as well. Porsche finished 23rd out of 31 manufacturers in our latest reliability survey, which isn't great and leaves it behind Audi, but above Jaguar. Every Cayman does get a three-year unlimited mileage warranty though. Standard safety kit is fairly stingy. Six airbags are standard, but you have to pay extra for autonomous emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, and a speed limit display. The Porsche 718 Cayman is an absolute joy to drive and beautifully built offering incredible handling, a classy interior, and a strong choice of engines as well. Yes, those engines don't sound particularly great, the real world economy is fairly poor, and standard equipment is far from generous, but all things considered, it is undoubtedly one of the best sports cars on the planet. For much more on the Porsche 718 Cayman, including our full review of it and all of its key rivals, head to whatcar.com. And while you're there, don't forget to look at the new car buying section on our website it could save you thousands off your next new car purchase. But before you do any of that, click subscribe to never miss a video.